This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, hipmunk.com. Hipmunk is a neat way to search for flights and hotels, since it has the ability to sort your results by agony. What does agony mean in this context, you ask? Well, it's a combination of price, duration, and number of stops. You know, all those things that make you insane when you travel. Here on the front page, I can search for flights by plugging in the departure city. Let's do SFO. And then the arrival city, we'll do JFK. And then um, you can type in something like December 3rd if you want, and that'll actually read the date. So you can see it clicked it over down here at the bottom. And then we want to do a return date, let's say December 9th. OK, then you just hit search, and up comes the results page after it finishes loading. So you can see the little chipmunk, he's dancing, he's dancing. So here's all our flights, and right now we are um, we are showing them by agony. So you can see that this is probably our best choice. It's not too, it's a little bit late, it's cheaper, there's no stops involved, so that's pretty good. And clicking on the leg will actually give you all the information about that leg of the journey, including if there's Wi-Fi or not on this flight, and there is Wi-Fi. So once you have your journey selected, it will send you to an Orbitz finish up page. So let's select this leg. And we'll go to the next one. We'll select this leg because we want to get home a little bit earlier. And now you can buy on Orbitz for the price that is, uh, is uh, detailed right here. Um, they have an iPad app as well, which prominently features the adorable chipmunk pilot. Pilot there. He's going, ah, travel plans have never been this cute. Uh, check it out today at hipmunk.com. All right, so up next we've got some more questions. Lorenzo has a question near and dear to me since I'm picking up the keys to our house today. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I'm terrified. Nice. Yes, I bought a house in earthquake territory. Yay. At least I bought it cheap. <laughs> Anyhow, getting internet throughout the house. Dear Patrick, Veronica, and Robert, I recently moved into a new house and need to wire my house for internet access. The catch is I really don't want to punch holes through walls and then trip over a mess the inesthetic ethernet cable. I can put it on the outside of the house, but there are quite a number of rooms, and the house basically has two plus one floors, which I think is three. The house <laughs> is wired for TV, or maybe two in a basement. The house, he says, is wired for TV and telephone. Almost every room has two of each on opposing walls. I really don't want to rely on wireless access for all my devices, and even though I heard you talk before about ethernet over power line, I'm not that fond of leaving those things plugged in. Hmm. Google shows that there are some ethernet over coax solutions. I'm interested in consumer grade versions of those, and they're priced away against my other options. Great show, though somewhat SEO-ish show titles. Keep up the good work, Lorenz Hsu. Uh, thanks, by the way, for noticing the show titles. They kind of have to be SEO-ish. That's how we get people to watch, yeah. or at least we find more people to watch and spread the word. Um, if you could actually email my, my, my boss's boss, Jim Louderback, and tell him that you think they're SEO-ish, he'll be really happy. Um, Personally, I wouldn't be too afraid of Powerline Ethernet. A lot of folks are running it with no problems. Um, I'm in a one-story house with a crawl space, and we're redoing the knob and tube with proper grounded sockets. We're going to pull CAT6 at the same time. That would be a nightmare, pulling CAT6 on a multi-story house. We've got friends that have done it, and it, it's basically right. You, you, you have to follow code. Do, you just, usually there's a lot of drilling and suffering and yanking and, and running things through uh, walls with wire tape. Um, Ethernet over coax is kind of spearheaded by the, the MOCA, that the Multimedia over Coax Alliance, which is great because there's a lot of homes, a lot of newer homes were built, you know, with proper electricity, unlike mine, and coax for cable, but don't have Ethernet. So MOCA um, has an interesting spec. Uh, it's much slower than gigabit. Um, but stuff like the uh, 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 Netgear's MCA B1001, that's the Mocha Coax Ethernet Adapter Kit. It's got two of those boxes in there. The list price is originally like 300 bucks. You can buy it on Amazon now for $110. You can connect up to 16 of these boxes, if I understand the spec correctly. Um, the small net builder crew is actually pretty impressed by this. Um, not so much in the overall throughput, because the overall throughput is not particularly spectacular. Um, but with its ability to stream HD video clips, the review was back when, when the, uh, these MOCA adapters first came out in 2009. The Netgear box was doing much better than Powerline. Basically, MOCA was functioning better than Powerline. So basically, you have you know, your cable or DSL router. You plug that into the MOCA box, um, in, the, in this case, the, the, the Netgear box. Um, and connect everything together with your wireless router. And then when you want to have, wherever you want to have Ethernet at the other end of coax, you plug in another one of these boxes. So you're looking like 110 bucks for two, which is pretty cheap. Um, 
what was interesting for me is uh, Netgear no longer lists the, the coax boxes on their website. I'm not sure if that means, they still have power line, but no uh, coax products. I'm not sure if that means they're working on the Mocha 2.0 devices. Mocha 2.0 was specced in June last year. I haven't seen any so far, but they should deliver four times the performance uh, over the current devices, one you can buy now. You might just want to put like one of those on each level of an access point. Um, you know, this isn't one of those things where it's like it works, but there doesn't seem to be a huge demand for it. The big demand for it seems to be at the professional level mm. where you're paying like 300 bucks a box and not like 50 bucks a box. I could go for a good mocha right about now. A <laughs> good mocha. Mm. I went to Sight Glass for the first time. Did you? It was tasty. You enjoyed it? I, yeah, I was, Ohm took me to Sight Glass on our way to go oh, up to Twit. It was nice. crazy. Yeah, that's his favorite spot. He's he, the mayor. He's a serious coffee snob. I have <laughs> no is. idea. Almost more than me. Mochas aside. <laughs> yes, we've got more of your emails still to come, but first, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. There are two things IT pros and their clients have in common, and I bet they have in common with you. You want the job done right, and you want it done fast. That's why we think you should take a look at GoToAssist Express by Citrix. We recommend it to anybody in IT. It puts clients at ease with its simple and secure remote support and puts you in the position to do what you want. Access, diagnose, and resolve problems. Plus, you can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. Just visit gotoassist.com slash techzilla to see how you can deliver live tech support to anyone, anywhere with GoToAssist Express. That's gotoassist.com slash techzilla for a free trial of a tool that'll make your day easier and help support techzilla.